So the Jets fell to the New England Patriots 25-22. to Drake May actually had a pretty good start to this game, ended up going down with a concussion. He's in concussion protocol. And then Jacoby Brissett comes in, and it seemed like Gillette Stadium was breathing a big, you know, heavy sigh when he went out there after his great performance. That's sarcasm. Uh, throughout the entire, you know, early part of the season, Drake May came in and really shocked a lot of Patriots fans, I would say. But Jacoby Brissett, I think, shocked everybody in the stadium on Sunday, pulling out an upset win. The Jets were seven-point favorites in this game. And Rodgers in the post game, bringing up an old friend. Take a listen. Yeah, I've been in the darkness. you got to go in there, make peace with it. Um, offensively, our goal has just got to be score 30. Doesn't matter what the other two sides are doing. You know, we have trust in our defense and teams. But if we're not scoring 30, we're underachieving. This offense can do that every single week. Bringing up darkness again. Not 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 great look when you're bringing up the darkness. Uh, but I want to know, though, um, do you think the Jets season is already over after only uh, eight weeks? Uh, my takeaway is the loss to one of the worst teams in the NFL, the one in six Patriots, was a defining moment for the Jets. Stick a fork in them, they're done. They beat the Patriots 24-3 to in the first meeting. Four games later, with more time, and work together and supposedly improving, they lose to the Patriots 25 to 22. How does that happen? They got a remaining schedule. Texans, that's a loss. It's going to be Thursday night. They're not going to be ready for that. They got a brand new head coach trying to still call a defense. Never been a head coach before. No one ex expected Salah was going to be fired. Three games later, they've lost all three games since Albrecht became the, the head coach. I predict they lose uh, on Thursday night to the Texans uh, by a score of uh, 28 to 17. And uh, that that's my prediction for Thursday night. At the Cardinals, hey, the Cardinals have been playing better. Uh, they, aren't, they aren't looking so bad these days. Kyla Murray to uh, Harrison, that's a, that's a, 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 pretty, uh, a pretty lethal uh, combination there. The Colts, well, guess who's going to be quarterback for the Colts? Joe Flacco. He used to play for the Jets. Did the Jets start him when the when the other players were hurt? Did they go with Zach Wilson instead of Joe Flacco? And uh, Zach Wilson, uh, you know, had terrible performances when they could have had Joe out there. Yeah, they that's uh, Joe probably remembers that, right? You think he's going to be up for that game? I think so. Then they play the Seahawks. Yeah, maybe they can win that game. I don't know. The Seahawks are looking pretty bad. They lost four in a row at the Dolphins. Well, two is back. He'll have uh, three games, three four games to prepare uh, for the for the Jets. They, they, maybe they'll be back in good form, and that will be a loss. They're gonna they're gonna lose that game probably at the Jaguars. Maybe they win that. The Jaguars are horrible. The Rams, uh, you know, the Rams are looking up now. They got Puka Nakua back, and uh, the, and Cup is out there. They only played twenty four snaps together all year, and last week uh, they. They uh, they won unexpectedly here uh, with a great performance and Matthew Stafford looking like his Super Bowl self at the Bills. Uh, it's a loss, and then home against the Dolphins. Who knows? I say the Jets are done. I completely agree. Um, where's where's the hope? Where's the hope? I mean, going right now, what we've seen the past two years is. A lot of hope. We got Aaron Rodgers. Wow. Four plays in, out for the year with an Achilles injury, going into this season. Okay, he's healthy. Always healthy. It's going to be great. Garrett Wilson, uh, Brees Hall coming back. It's going to be great. Braylon Allen is, is, is a shock early in the season. A reinforced offensive line. Uh, defense was the highest graded defense last year uh, by Pro Football Focus. We're going to do great this season. A, a relatively easy schedule. And then Aaron Rodgers became what we've seen from Aaron Rodgers so far. The last 25 games, now I'm, obvious, I'm not including the one game that he had because he had four plays. The last 25 essentially full games he's played since 2022, Rodgers is not even a top 15 quarterback. 40% of his games he wins. 223 passing yards. 63% completion percentage. 38 touchdowns to 19 picks. This is a guy who has, I think, a near a, a four to one touchdown to interception ratio. Has now this 38 touchdowns, 19 picks. 
That's two to one. 6.8 yards per attempt. 88.1 passer rating. He is not a good quarterback. Yes, he is a f- uh, future first ballot Hall of Famer because he is well, a four or five time MVP winner. He's great in the postseason since his Super Bowl uh, win. I think he's seven and nine in the postseason, which is obviously not great at all. But I don't think at this point there's anything that you could really say that he's out of the Hall of Fame, you know, inductee category. He's probably going to make it. But the Jets, to me, are essentially like the Brooklyn Nets and the Phoenix Suns of the NFL. A bunch of talent anywhere, a bunch of talent in all places. You look, uh, the guards, oh, you got, you got beautiful guards, James Harden, Kyrie Irving. Then you look back, and though you got Kevin Durant, the star. Look look at the Jets. Oh, we rebuilt the offensive line. We got a Hall of Fame quarterback. We have Garrett Wilson. We have a tremendous young defense. Where's the cohesion? Where Where, where is the, the, the glue holding this team together? Where's the chemistry? Yeah, you could win a couple games in the regular season, maybe. But at this point, the Jets aren't even doing that. They're terrible. At least with Robert Sala, the defense was good. Ben, uh, Bill Barnwell uh, wrote that the Jets were ranked sixth in EPA per play in the first five games, and uh, uh, EPA and fourth in points allowed per drive. Since then, the last three games where they went 0 3, they fall into last in EPA per play and 26th in points allowed per drive. This is terrible. And also, he keeps going, they failed to force a single turnover and are allowing teams to convert nearly 77% of their series into another first down or touchdown. Before Salah got fired, the figure was below 64%, which was the fifth best mark. And we're over here expected to believe, through Woody Johnson's mouth, that Robert Sala was the guy who should have been held accountable. Do we not realize, can someone else besides me and you maybe realize, that this is the New York Rodgers? This, this, is, this is all it is. It's the Aaron Rodgers New York Jets. Everything has to rely and fall on Aaron Rodgers' shoulders because he got, I guarantee you, he got the coach fired. He didn't need to directly say it, but he sure as hell didn't defend uh, Robert Sala when Woody Johnson spoke to him. He got uh, Devontae Adams there. He got Alan Lazard there. Last year, he got Randall Cobb there. He was pushing for all these pieces. Aaron Rodgers is the worst assistant GM in the NFL. Because all of the pieces, have they hit yet? No. Devontae Adams got absolutely torched by Christian Gonzalez. And as soon as they went to zone coverage, Marte Mapu did a horrible job guarding Devontae Adams. Three catches for, I think, 38 yards against Marte Mapu. He did not have a great job. But when manned up against Christian Gonzalez, one catch. Yeah, the man the man uh, defense for the Patriots in the secondary worked very well. They played man. Christian Gonzalez did a phenomenal job. And, uh, you know, Marcus Jones gave up some catches to Wilson. Well, that's what you get when you have a 5'8 cornerback. Yeah, that uh, that Devontae Adams was was nowhere to be found. I would say uh, the collapse after Johnson fired Salah was predictable. Uh, Albrick never been a head coach. Doesn't know anything. Does he know anything about the offense, how offenses work? Uh, Why would you put a defensive guy in there? The offense was the thing that was the problem. He's still uh, he's still trying to call a defense, all brick uh, defensive plays, and it's obvious the defense's performance has declined. I mean, Salah was a defensive guy too. Those two guys together made that defense help make that defense good. Uh, Devontae Adams four catches for fifty four yards. He was a non factor in the game. The Jets' defense is not as a, a, the elite unit that uh, they uh, claim to be. Uh, the Pats' final drive, 70 yards, 12 plays to score a touchdown with, what, 20 seconds Twenty seconds left on fourth down? They even had a chance right there at the end, right down on the one-yard line. Stop them, and you win the game. They couldn't do it. Seems impossible for them to make the playoffs now. It's not even, it's not even November. huh? Now they have to play the Texans on short turnaround on Thursday night game. I just made my call on that. Happy Halloween. <laughs> well, it is going to be a very scary Halloween, especially for the Jets, who I think, honestly, are going to get blown out by the Houston Texans. I know Stephon Diggs went down, but I'm hoping Nico Collins gets healthy enough to play uh, because although I think C.J. Stroud with Tank Dell and Joe Mixon will be fine, the defense seems to be pretty good. Um, but, you know, Aaron Rodgers looks washed. I talk about Russell Wilson being washed. I, I might be wrong about that. He's had two pretty good games. Although the running game has finally woken up uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So maybe, maybe not. Although Russell Wilson has made a couple of very, very nice plays. Uh, this all falls in Aaron Rodgers. You can't blame the head coach. The head coach got fired. He isn't there anymore. 
to blame the interim is not really that fair, uh, but I guess you could. At this point now, the Jets are blaming their kicker, which they just had open tryouts today for, for a, a, a few kickers that tried out for them. I don't think Greg DeLeg is going to be there uh much longer what happened to him i mean he's one of the better kickers in the league for a long time he used to be and they got old no he's uh he's falling apart man yeah. he, he, hit some, he couldn't make an extra point yeah no it, it was bad um but i think when it comes down to it the problem was the offense when robert Sala was there the defense was fine and now neither is fine right neither they're both fine. bad because jacoby Brissett, who the defense made extremely uncomfortable in the first game was able to complete two fourth quarter scoring drives uh, with now a bolstered defensive front with Hassan Reddick out there now. How do you let Jacoby Brissett torch you and leave two fourth uh, fourth quarter scoring drives against that defense? Mm -hmm. One thing I'd say about the Patriots, they went back to their game plan that they started the year with. So it was to focus on the run. Yeah, focus on the run. Pick up some yardage. That's not a deep ball. Throw. And uh, and then you know dink and dunk with uh, Jacoby Brissett, and it worked. It worked. Maybe they should try that again. Well, no, because that's what got Jacoby Brissett benched is because their offense yeah. was pitiful. Well, I don't think uh, Drake May will be in there on Sunday. I mean, it's going to take two weeks at least to recover from a concussion. Well, you know, he's in concussion protocol, so Jacoby Brissett might be out there. My guess is probably he will be. I think he will be because I don't think Drake May could clear concussion protocol in that time. But no, it's it's looking very grim for the Jets. I don't see any. I could just be a real pessimist right now, but I don't see any hope. Where, where is the light at the end of the tunnel? It's uh, dark. Aaron Rodgers yeah. said it's darkness. Yeah, it's darkness. <laughs> I've been in the darkness. Well, guess what? You're not alone. Yeah, no. There's a lot of other guys in the darkness with you. Woody Johnson also. Woody uh, Johnson's in there. <laughs> Uh, the old breakfast in there, right? He's in the darkness. Uh, Sauce Gardner, he's in the darkness, right? Uh, Brees Hall, he's in the darkness. Uh, look, they're, they're what, 32nd in rushing? Uh, you know, the only one that's not in there is Garrett Wilson. He's not in the darkness. He, he's in the light. He can catch the ball when they throw it to him. But everybody else seems to be dark. You know what else? You know, you know, what, you know what's crazy? They're probably doing ayahuasca in that darkness, too. Maybe. That's it. Rodgers is passing it out. Ayahuasca for everybody. That's how we're going to get out of this darkness. And maybe Rodgers does need to tra uh, take a trip over to Egypt or Peru, wherever the hell he goes, yeah, to well, take that. He did that and missed, missed out on uh, part of the pre uh, part of the uh, training camp. Yeah, mandatory yeah. mini camp. Yeah, yeah, I, he I wonder, because it seems was, like there's a disconnect between, especially early, a disconnect between Rodgers and the offense. I wonder if any of those mandatory mini camp, mandatory training could have helped. Camps, maybe might, they might have helped. helped. Maybe could have. Maybe yeah. who knows? Couldn't have hurt. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to Anchor.fm/slash/TheHarveyHour or anywhere you get your podcasts.